Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna be game two between Imperial Storm as well as RDCF. And today it will be Babel bring you game two, and joining me is a familiar voice that would be Ice Ice yes, Baby. Sir. How are you doing, Josh? Yep. Welcome back, guys. Game number two. I am doing fine indeed, Babel. I hope you um, you guys had a uh, game number one covered with Girl Lexi's Ice Bubble. That's not if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I do believe that is correct. Uh, yeah, she is from Galaxy, and that's her first time casting, so I do give her a little bit of a leeway because everyone, that's always a first time for everyone. So um, you wish you would do it, uh, you have done it a lot better, but uh, you wish you did it a lot better, but sometimes, you know, things just don't work out the way you want to, and we're just gonna give them a lot more extra space to try there. <laughs> that's it, uh, still gonna give her a lot of uh, uh, thanks for joining me, Alice. Uh, since Lark Ready. bailed out on me to go on a date, that guy will die! Let me just promise you that. <laughs> anyway, back to this okay, game. Man. Game 2 well in the way. The band heroes are gonna be the Keeper, the Sand Rave, Moon Queen, and the Fate there. That's correct. Hmm, let's see. This, uh... Finally, okay, engineer, the engineer pickup. If I'm not mistaken, engineer was on the enemy's team for game number one, and I do believe that Impunity Storm managed to pick that up for their own god tier because, uh, of of course, you don't let two god tier supports fall into the same team. So DCS getting a hands on that Master of Arms as well as that Wretched Hag, which uh, could be really flexible in terms of roles. So DCS doing a really good draft right there. I can't see through what their picks are. But um, it is going to be safe to say that uh, he might be going to using that as a suicide hero if he's going for a, a jungle to say at least. But nothing can be confirmed or denied at this moment. We do see Master of Arms and Rally would probably head to the middle lane. So with that being said and done, Prisoner 945 again being picked up by Impunity Storm. So I don't know, Emperor played kind of a little bit questionable prisoner, I, w I would say for the middle lane. He did not do that well, but I just hope that if he is going to play it again, he should be uh, bucking up his systems right now. He should, and that is going to be really good advice coming from you. My only question is, he needs to be really careful when it comes to the mid lane. And he needs to know what kind of a lineup he is up against. The only problem with the previous game is that he was always... I, I know Emperor, man. I know that he is always wanting to go all the way out uh, to maybe try and get the extra value. But sometimes it's not always about the exchange. It's about uh, making sure that the rest of your teammates are around. And that is some of the things that maybe he would like to pay closer attention to. But that's it. Still not going to discredit him. He did a very good job previously. Just that now he needs to make sure that he gets his act together. And that's it. Legion team, we have got the MOA, the Wretched Hack, and the Rally. Hellborn's gonna be Engineer Bubbles plus the Prison, the 945. Nicely covered by you. And in game one, there was an insane rotation coming from both sides. More towards Imperial Storm than towards RDCF because they were eventually a little bit outplayed. So for this game, I hope that that they just don't make the same mistakes and they do pay a lot of attention to Lockdown Nox. That said, second banning phase is gonna be the Torture, the Luna, and the Draconis. What do you think about those heroes? I think heroes are kind of okay. They are bad with it. At least torturer, Luna, to say the least. They're really, really uh, powerful DPS for ter uh, in terms of supports. But the Draconis is uh, kind of throw throwing me off a little bit because we don't see a lot of Draconis being picked up lately, and he is kind of just one of those uh, range carry heroes that just died off in the in a meta game. But okay, Dampier, Dampier, really, really scary hero. I've seen what kind of. Um, what kind of devastating people would play a Dampier? A lot from uh, Impunity Earth and some from, a, I think, Orange Esports, if I'm not mistaken. But, well, he is a very, very terrifying new hero. And yes, he would be banned out. But I'm not sure if DCES has actually drafted a Dampier in their past. But, well, with that being said, it's just, it's, it's alright to ban it out. But I'm not sure for this game. Dark Lady would be the next to follow up for DCES. Uh, okay, D Dark Lady, really powerful carry, but not sure if ban worthy. That's what I would always say because Impunity Storm, I don't think they draft Dark Ladies that often. So it's these two teams, they don't really play against each other. So I don't think they kind of know each other's draft. So they're like just, I think, banning it off the face. And based on their current draft, like you see, Engineer, Bubbles, and Prisoner, I don't think they are uh, currently fulfilling the carry roles in any way. So. DC is just trying to ban out as much carries as possible. Draconis Dark Lady being banned out. And if you look closely for uh, Impunity Storm banning out some of the supports, to say the least, but we have Master of Arms already in the pool, so they are, you know... What what other heroes can you ban out? So, like, seriously, to say up. It's because Aluna and possibly Glacius, you, you can't ban out all because you, you are only allowed three bans for the second banning phase. 
That's right, so that's it. That's gonna be a Kraken band coming from Nova, and I do believe that Dark Lady, sorry to correct you a little bit, but Dark Lady was played on Nox quite frequently, so that could oh. be the main reason there. I mean, uh, again, we are just up to speculations, and I'm not too sure if he is gonna be playing Dark Lady, but for sure we will not see that this game. Uh, we do have Empath, uh, that's gonna be a pickup coming from the Legion side, so DCS man gonna go with the Empath as a support. That's gonna be really exciting on the Wretch Attack if Hex gonna be the carry. So coming out so far into the lineup, I would believe that Rally MOA is going to the mid. Empath will be supporting. It could be a carry, it could be the suicide, but they have not disclosed that just yet. It's gonna be a Glacius coming for Team Halbon. So Glacius is gonna make sure that there is the extra dual support coming out to play here. There is also Bubbles there, and I'm expecting Bubbles to be played by Murph into the suicide lane. That would be pretty good play. Seeing the previous game, Murph did a really good job uh, on the keeper. There was always prompt ultimate. The only problem was that. It wasn't the most effective, it didn't catch everyone uh, a couple of times, but the first one did and I was just generally a little bit more p uh, pleased with that uh, well, kind of a performance. So that is pretty good coming up for Murph. And that's it from T. Hellborn. It should be a last carry pickup. And what do you think it's going to be? I have no idea. There's, their options are so wide, even <laughs> Gemini whatsoever. Or, uh, I don't, like... Look, Scout, Kronos, everything's still on board. So we have I, this is the most I've ever seen carries being banned. Even the Sand Rave and Dark Lady is already being nicely banned out there. We don't see that this game. So yeah, Nighthound will be the carry role for DCES. So it would be safe to say that the dual lanes are being present as well as Wretched Hack would be the suicide. So the one nice thing to note is that Tempest is still in the pool. It is not banned out. It is not picked. So this is the first time I've ever seen a Tempest being let go even though it's not being banned out. So, yeah. Impunity Storm forced to uh, make a decision right here. They have the bubbles to work with. Uh, if they want to make the uh, jungle work, eh, they could, but is it worth it? Because DCS, they just they, they let it go. So, if, you, if Impunity Storm is going to draft the jungle right now, they will have one less hero to work with. And considering um, RDCF's really <sighs> aggressive lineup, I am not... Encouraging a jungle. Wow. Yeah, with that being said, it's gonna be Gemini, see? So Gemini was still in the pool and they really do pick that up. So I'm really glad to see this hero in this game. That's right, that's it. Tempest would not fit well into Impurity Storm's lineup because there is no carry uh, potential on any of those heroes except for uh, the last slot, so it's left for the carry. Pretty obvious there, but still Gemini is gonna be picked here and I'm just a little bit pleased to say this because Gemini uh, previously I know that only BDT runs fantastic Gemini on PUE, but other than that there has been no other, uh, well, it's Gemini that, oh, I, that has caught my eye, so... Well, that is going to be pretty good to see. That is, that is indeed. So we are having two really hard carries against each other. Melee carries, to say the least. There We have a Nighthound on to DCS. And we do have a Gemini on to the Impunity Storm. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go into a little bit of an introduction right here. We have RDCF on the Legion team. Jan Doyle. Can I just call him that? Yeah, it's gonna be it's on our wretched. Gun, bro. No, can I just call him Yendio? Oh my god. Okay. Yendio. <laughs> Yendio. 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 Oh no, wretched yep. Oh no, I'm Taff. We're gonna be our carry role for today. He is our Nighthound. My his onto the Empath. Blasphemo onto our MOA of Arms. From Frank or on that mid rally. Whereas on the Hellborn team, we have Nova again. On to that <laughs> engineer. I always see Nova and engineer, by the way, just saying. So, Bass Tom, he would be our Glacius and Nox. On! He hit that 1000 gold per minute mark for this game. And he's our Gemini Emperor once again on a Prisoner 945. And our Girl Lexi Murph on that bubbles. I, dude, I must say that Girl, uh, Girl Lexi Blood, he is uh, Murph, right? Yeah, Murph. She played quite a Good keeper last game. I, I'm not sure what you said, but the game, the, like the clashes I saw, the way she disjoints and things like that, she, she was pretty insane for, for yeah, playing the did. keeper. So, so she did yeah, a pretty good job. I mean, she didn't catch everyone all the time, but that is uh, pretty forgivable. Uh, there were pretty a uh, few pockets of opportunity where she could have caught more, but I guess that she knows that there is this uh, the stone height on the pret. That's why she didn't jump in just yet. And that is pure patience, man. And that kind of patience you can only see from a girl. <laughs> just saying, because guys, yeah. <laughs> we, we just jumped the gun, so it's again another stereotype that I'm saying, so do forgive me, I hope that no, no buts are hurt today, but just face it man, they are generally a little bit more patient than we are, and that's the way we like it, so that's it, Girl X's Murph gonna provide a lot more extra oomph coming up for Team Impunity Storm this game.
Yep, and definitely doing a lot of work since last game. So with that, Impunity Storm do take game number one. Would they take game number two? That is the real question. Ooh, speaking about Merv down south, she's gonna try to run away, but the shell sub is not gonna be there for her, and she is unfortunately going to sound the blood loss there. That is just sad to see. Yep, that uh, this, that's a Custer's curse. I almost said that, but well, that is being said. So. Bloodlust in favor for DC, yeah, it's really unfortunate for Murph there. Let's just see how it would progress. So look at look at Murph's GPM man, she's negative twenty-eight. <laughs> okay, that's that's just rising. So anyway, lanes are pretty uh, well set up. We do see the MOA of arms as well as Rally being in the middle lane versus a solo prisoner. Right, so on the top we have the suicide wretched hack as um as planned out. So RDCS, yeah, they're the lane's kind of really set up right there. Oh, Nighthound as well as Empath being nicely in the bottom lane. Empath is going to do a really great job of just boxing out uh, Murph right there. I'm not sure what uh, will Murph have like the time of his life. Look, a great wall actually coming out from my his, applying that auto attack harass. So Murph is already down really, really low. Speaking of down, um, she has to be, she has to play really, really careful, especially with this uh, Nighthound Empath uh, laning. See. Yep, and that said, 1-0, oh, going up for RDCF because of the Murf kill, that is definitely very good to see coming from DCS. Uh, that's the same team, buddy, for you guys who are a little bit confused over the clan tag. The clan tag just got changed to DCS, uh, calling themselves DC spots in the state of RDCF. That being said, doesn't really matter because this game, they need to win it to make it a little bit of a draw. Imperial Storm should be wanting to win this game to make it a clean 3-point lead for them. That's it, first two days weren't really fantastic for them and they need as much points as they can get to make sure they secure the playoff spot this time around. And again, mid lane, it's gonna be the MOA with the rally against the prisoner and the engineer, like they nicely say there. I have absolute faith in the engineer and the key and the uh, prisoner combo, sorry. Because those those are the combo that I've seen in Purity Storm train before and I hope that that is gonna be effective today. Yep, speaking of effect, uh, I'm hoping to see a lot of uh, good hooks from Emperor this game, especially uh, with that uh, hooking onto Master of Arms. But the real problem is that they are going up against the Rally. So Rally being one of the most insane uh, escape heroes with the one of the best mechanisms, which is the comp, which is the compel. So uh, yeah, they have to kind of bait out that compel before they can actually get any hooks done, and that's going to be a real, real problem for them. So. And Let's just see how this plays out. Yeah, top lane hack just got away pretty safely. Uh, very low health there. Could have just died, but didn't want to cut you because I thought that she should be just fine. And that's it. The health potion is going to be in effect there, so she is definitely going to be well more than fine. And that's it. Mid lane, still a lot of regression coming from both sides, but double damage on the engineer. Not enough to secure much of anything yet. They need to make sure that hook lands okay. first, following it a lot more stuff. There we go. The hook is going down as we speak. And a cack as well, but is that going to amount to a kill? The shackle is going to be full effect there. It could be a kill. But the Compel is just doing its work, Rally making sure that, oh my god, it goes down. And Meat Lane somehow just Rally making an extra little bit of a comeback. Uh, the character is going to help Nova a little bit, so Nova is going to be fine. And meanwhile, bottom lane, there's a little bit of engagement happening between the Empath as well as the Bubbles. But Bubbles is more than okay. Wall going out as usual, and she's going to be fine. Yep, she, uh, they really, really clutch. No, no, clutch to say, but... Yeah, that short range shell stuff, enough to just get her away from the wall. But yeah, that mid lane, man. That Nova with the double damage, picking up that final auto attack onto Master Valve. You know, our top lane, Wretched Hack does finally go down to this Gemini and Glacius combo. So, Glacius, one of the best heroes with the Ice Imprisonment, is just gonna lock Hack down. She's not gonna blink away whatsoever. And then finally, she just go down for the third time. Yeah, coming back to just say, like, that Nova with that double damage, landing that last kill onto MOA of Arms. That's uh, just pretty insane, despite that compel, trying to save him, but ultimately it's going to be a 2-1 to one in favor for Impunity Storm right now. We are looking at 4 minutes into this game, and Nox is currently taking off at 312, actually 320 gold per minute at this point, with 1 assist. He is at level 5 by the way, and we'll hope to see that level 6 dual dogs at this moment. Yep, and that's what we all love to see, um, but still he's only level 5, Nox GPM so far about 317, a little bit behind that of the Nighthound because Nighthound did have a kill before that. Hellbound's gonna call for a pause, they should have some latency problem with Bastom's computer, which is why he is walking back home, I am just assuming of course. It could be because he just want to go back and regen his mana, which is currently very low. As just the fact that he doesn't have, uh, he does have pretty good items, uh, as in pretty good gold in the bank, so that should amount to maybe a smaller red boots. Um, but again, it could be anything. Yep, I mean, uh, if you look closely, like the 
Bubbles, okay, let's 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 just jump back to my bubbles a little bit. He's doing fine himself. He's uh she's a level four, but the real question is if Nighthound starts really taking up at this point, like like what you nicely mentioned, she, the Nighthound is really really far ahead compared to our Nox. But being with that empath in lane, which is uh she's doing a really nice pull at this moment, he's only a level four compared to our uh, uh bubbles. So he's probably hitting the level five mark anytime soon, but definitely that one death pulling her back. Just a tea little bit, but not really sure. Not really sure how this will work out. But being a suicide, she should be fine for now because uh, she's the solo after all. But for um, for our wretched hag on top, that one death as well. So it's kind of like uh, the hag and the bubble suicide. Kind of the fact they're coming kicking in, so both suicides not doing as well. So, anyway, bottom lane, the pulse is coming out from Nighthound, applying a little bit of harassment onto that bubbles. And he she would just um nicely head back. So, yeah, I mean, despite the nerf onto this Nighthound, he's still a really, really strong hero. Despite the fact that you don't pounce behind a person anymore, you just pounce to him, despite uh, wherever you're facing. That's right, so Nighthound not able to come from behind anymore, not the way he likes it, but. Anyway, a Nighthound still a very effective hero. <laughs> yeah, if you saw what I did there. In this game, one is to two here, five minutes and 200 gold lead for Team Legion. Hellborn is still pretty much uh, in a pretty good shape. Nothing's still broken yet. And Nox is in a pretty good farm, trying to overachieve him, but they also need to address MTAF doing a really good job on the Nighthound. So this game, it's again on the onus of either teams to try and address the carry, which in this game, again, both sides are not doing so. Um, Nox is having practically free farm up north, and Nighthound is have he does have very good support coming up from the M Cup. However, I'd like to give Murph credit for standing a level four as compared to Ratchet Hack, only level three, and that's it about Hack. Back to the meat lane where Hack is just nicely gonna try to rotate down here. We might see an engagement happening. Yeah, we do see that glaciers as well trying to rotate him in, trying to get something happen, but I don't think anything will happen anytime soon because if a hook would to be uh cast on this rally they would need to shut him down real quickly before a compel would appear but oh nice wall coming from empath right there oh but you didn't see the hook though oh but then hook really really good job coming up by emperor and he does snag up that kill nova actually getting credit for that kill so my is doing a little bit of a misplay right there but yep uh cast his curse what to say good wall but well the hook cool factor wall. is a little bit too strong cool wall, but bro. not good enough anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, I do believe that she forgot that there's a hook, like, god damn it, the hero has got a hook, what the hell am I doing there? <laughs> she thought she was gonna be safe, but was actually dancing behind a glass uh, panel there. You know, like they normally glass do, panel. but, and yep, anyway. <laughs> Enough about that talk, uh, back to this game, 1-3, 700 gold lead, going for the Hellbond team, doing a lot of work so far, and uh, I would say that they have got a slight lead because of the kill, and... It's gonna be good to see because Glacier is now is gonna try to rotate up north to pick up a kill on Hack, and it's gonna be Ice Imprisonment going down first. The stun from Gemini falling really quickly. It's gonna translate to a kill for Nox. So Nox is now already about 370 GPM. MTF is also at a pretty high amount. They are both tied about one kill each, but I would say that uh, in terms of CS, uh, Nighthound is about 47 is to 17, and for Gemini it's got about 40. So definitely not very far behind, but there is some catching up to do. Yeah, if you pull up that gold per minute chart real quick, you'll see that Nighthound is just fluctuating way above almost everyone else. But three of the heroes, like three of the supports, are not doing that well. So, oh, mid hook actually just missing that uh, rally. But anyway, for the Hellborn, for Infinity Storm, like their gold, I mean their gold deposit is kind of balanced out almost the uh, the teammates, you know, not just a Nighthound who is dominating the gold per minute charts, but at, at least everyone else is sitting above 120 gold per minute at an average, whereas our Gemini is on 367. So it in favor, I would say the Imperial Storm has the better end for the uh, resource control, at least for now, because it's eight minutes in and they do have four kills. So let's not uh, let's not forget that. Yep, that's it. Eight minutes up already, like I nicely mentioned. One is to four, and Hellborn having a very good position so far. The only problem is the MTF Nighthound that they haven't addressed yet. And I would expect Nova to come down with Emperor soon to make sure that there is some form of a kill on this Night Beast here. But that's it, still Gemini, the separate beast of his own, is just farming as much as he can. Still very far behind in terms of GPM, but I would expect Nox to be able to catch up very soon. Um, that again, both teams are playing pretty passively so far, except for the Hellborn team having a slight amount of push coming up to against them in their way down south there. So tier 1 is going to be challenged a bit. It is slightly above 50%, so it should be fine. And pretty much a passive game as compared to the first one. Mm -hmm. 
Really strong rotations coming out from Baston, playing that Glacius right there. He's at mid again after completing the kill onto top. So right now he's using the Icy Prism and coming onto Rally, and a hook is going to connect as well as the cat. Will he get away? No, nope, it's not going to be enough. Nova gets the credit for the kill again. The turret doing a lot of work. So we do see the, all the team synergy coming up for Impune to Storm, and it is definitely paying off right now. Five kills already. So Emperor really doing great Bottom work. Bottom lane, Bubbles get smoked, trying runway, but no shell surf to send to it. Here comes the heck to pick up the kill again. And Murph is going to be a little bit of a tough spot so far, but level six already, very respectable. So no credits to her, no discredit to her anyway. Um, level six Bubbles in the suicide lane. There is also the fact to note that the heck is only level five, but they do get the tower and there is no form of defense and as per the previous engagement you can definitely witness the chemistry come from Puny Storm. This team definitely trained very hard. Um, the amount of uh, well they, they was perfectly executed let's just say that way. Mm -hmm. Anyway top lane You're the compel is gonna come out to Gemini and the seismic slam was nicely cancelled out just in case it wasn't enough to kill him so uh, good decisions. Coming up from Francor but uh, just a little harassment. You do see that Compelled not even dealing any form of damage on his Gemini. He just bottles up nicely right there. And oh, here comes the Twin Fang. He's going to connect onto his Rally. Even a Kek and the Tara is not going to be not going to connect the turret, but it doesn't really matter. He goes down with that triple kill. So, not triple kill. I said that triple train, actually, in Puny Storm. So this, I mean, the Engineer is really, really kicking in, as well as the Prisoner. Like you said, they trained up this combination really, really long. And it is definitely paying off in this game, like you nicely mentioned. Yep, it is. And we do have uh, sixes to two. And Hellborn, despite the fact that they have got a sizable amount of kill, still no goal lead. That is due to the sole credit of Nighthound standing about 400 plus GP. And enough about the Nighthound. Let's talk a little bit more about the support. And support vis a vis, it's nice to see that. Uh, oh, hold that thought again because the nice little hook coming from Emperor, but he is left alone here. Pop coming in, but is that going to be hard enough? And that's going to be questionable. Seismic Slam not soon enough, and it's only going to be Murph. Murph is going to sidestep away. That Seismic Slam very fashionably. That's going to be okay. But Murph is again going to be alone, and there is no further backup coming from the rest of his team. The dust is going out as planned. So Nighthound is going to be spotted out here. If Bastom lets out his imprisonment, he does that. But there is again no follow-up. Where is the members? Novar is just dancing behind there. And will land the uh, energy field quickly. Is it going to be enough? He doesn't have enough mana for a keg, so he should be done there. Uh, he does nicely try and run away. But that kill from the MOE is going to be valid. And it would also go down. That's him. Merv will pick up a double tap there. And looking for more R. We will pick up a hat trick. No, it goes to Nox. That KSer. That GPM Biz wants some goal for himself. Best time is also gonna get a kill today, and that seems like nine out is gonna be done. And that would go to most. So hat trick still can be visionalized here, so definitely it's definitely gonna be good for Team Hellborn. Yep, hat trick for Merv, man. This is that's insane. That would be a genocide, folks. Coming out for Impunity Storm. So getting that genocide, it's gonna really push them forward to this team. Already just transiting into that 2.8k gold advantage, 11 kills lead, only 12 minutes into this game. That is pretty insane. So right now we do have that Gemini already officially overtaking the Nighthound in terms of gold per minute at 453 compared to all of his other teammates, all above 150. And that is pretty noticeable compared to our Legion team, who is all below 150. So even with that Nighthound factor coming in, if you don't have a team, you aren't going to be successful. So because, uh, yep, that's just what it is. This is Heroes of New Earth, ladies and gentlemen. You don't go solo. And it was really unfortunate <laughs> they did not get they did not get a kill onto the Gemini. And well, you do see how low the Gemini was. So that, uh, yep, that Gemini, Gemini. You, you don't get a kill on him. That's pretty pretty sad to know. Yep, pretty that's sad. a new cash phrase for marketing there coming from ISIS, baby. What? You don't go solo. <laughs> yeah, that would be for Han. Anyway, here comes Invisible Glaciers trying to set something up at a meat lane here. He is definitely not going to be spotted out. However, Hack is going to be a little bit of a tight spot coming from the Gemini split. Dogs, they're doing a lot of work, but Hack is trying to pot away. Is that going to be enough for a stun? It is not, and they are going to try and fuse back there. The big dog now going to show itself, but the wolf or dog, whatever it is, will not get any kill today. So no meat for that beast there. Going back home to try and get a little bit more farm. Uh, hopefully she's gonna be a little bit more lucky there, uh, since he's gonna be a lot more lucky there. And here comes the MOA. Bless for most is gonna be around. 
Will be able to spot out the Glacius, I hope. Yes, he is. And uh, Icy Prisma going up, but do note, it doesn't stop the skills, though. So, needs to be really careful. There's a hack behind. And Bubbles just a little bit confused. Not sure why she ran this way. Should have just backed up in the other direction, but that's okay. Towers within deniable range. So, it definitely is going to be denied. There is no doubts about this one. No further, co no further contest coming from the Legion site. Uh, I can help one. So, help one is going to go there. But help one does get the meat lane tower due to credit of that. Uh, Hell Cannon, I nearly caught in a meat wagon, I just missed that item so that, that kind of a unit so much as compared to a Hell Cannon. Which do you Hell prefer, Ice? Do you like the meat cannon or the Hell Cannon? Uh, meat cannon sounds catchy, but Hell oh, Cannon was the one really from Warcraft, dude. Just saying. Oh, yeah, exactly, it's the meat cannon, so uh, as to adopting its pass a little bit, a little bit. So, yeah, anyway, the, the uh, oh. mid kill was actually kind of missed right Sorry, there. Sorry, guys, gonna have to stop you because here comes the invisible night now. Whip and buff inside. It's gonna be a kill on Emperor. They are gonna be able to sidestep away that nice wall. It's top tier great. Just so yummily placed. And down goes Emperor. Meanwhile, meat lane, a little bit of engagement happening, but rarely is gonna be more than fine. Bubbles does come up, but Bubbles having no ultimate at all, so there's no Kalfu, no lockdown, and Rally should be better than okay. But here comes the Knight now, trying to say something out quickly, and maybe the kill on Nova is gonna be realized that the wall again gonna be nice, be placed, but the stun on Knight now is proving too quickly, uh, proving too much for him there. He is gonna be okay. But Engineer is going to be just nicely hiding and juking around there. Nighthound is still very far behind, but the last pounce should be able to get a kill and will get it done. The Kelfield, unfortunately, a little bit too late. And Seismic Slam just going to be taunted by Franco. It could be now, but Nighthound is going to have a double tap today. It could have been a hat trick, but that's it. Glacier is going down and Bless for Moose picking that one up. Emperor comes in trying to make something happen. MOA in a little bit of a bad spot there. Audi is going to be used here, so MOA is going to be dead already. Gemini just coming in nicely to try to pick up a kill on Rally. The slow is in full effect and Francoa is going to take the fall. So that's a 9 is to 14 here and 3k goal lead for the Hellborn side. Yep. We see a lot of exchanges actually happening in the middle lane tower just because of that. I mean, just because of that little clash itself, we do see uh, Impunity Storm yeah, just driving forward a little bit more, even even catching up in terms of experience. So, right now, even despite that 9 to 14, DCS has the capabilities to make this a comeback because the Nine Hound sitting at 5 1 and 2, he is definitely going to take off right it now. It seems like top lane, Gemini looking for a kill on the hack. Hack is looking to just nicely flash away, but it seems like it is not even going to be needed. Raymaster's call going to be employed here, but is it going to be enough? Oh, a questionable flash of darkness. It would be it, and down goes that ugly hack. <laughs> ugly hack, dude, that's oh, the yeah. wretched Have you seen her? bro. That's no. a wretched hottie, dude. How, no, how I'm looking at the profile pic. It is not a hottie. Okay. <laughs> they should maybe change those two, but anyway, that's it. Yep, she does look pretty good up front. Uh, that's a 9 to 15 here, and despite the whole discussion, they're 4k goal late for Imperial Storm. They are apparently on a steamroll so far. 500 GPM already on Nox, whereas the carry for Team Legion, I'm Taft playing as the uh, Night Hunt only at about 470 at best, so that is a little bit questionable coming from the Legion side. But it is pretty much a date even game, don't you think? Yep, really, really even despite this uh, goal and experience lead coming out from uh, Impunity Storm. Because look, I mean, look at his Night Hunt. He has the Firebrand and working his way towards the Shrunken Head already, so he is definitely taking off pretty much soon. Compared to our uh, Gemini, yes, he has that Light Brand. But do note the difference between a Gemini and a Nighthound is that Nighthound has more of the uh, lockdown because of that smoke as well as uh, chasing potential. But Gemini, we all know what the Gemini does. So it really comes down to how the entire team plays out because I'm not going to repeat my catchphrase. But yeah, so <laughs> Nighthound working, working his way towards the shrunken hit first because of that amount of... Uh, Insane magic damage as well as lockdown coming out from this uh, Hellborn team, so that is definitely a good item coming out for him. He should have it in probably the next uh, three minutes or so if he farms, uh, if he farms continuously, to say. Yep, and that's it. Nox uh, definitely having a very good game so far as compared to Hack. Hack definitely now again is gonna reprise the same nightmare from last summer. There, the stun is gonna connect, and Hack is going down. Beauty or not, wow, she is gone. Me. So we have to face it. Take it or leave it. When she's gone, you're gonna have to drop it. And how one team making really good work so far. 4k goal lead. And I, this is gonna be a really interesting game. Yep, interesting indeed. You see, like, if you don't you learn from learn from your past, you are bound to repeat it. And our Nox is definitely capitalizing on that advantage. And he is now level 16. Oh, about that, though, it seems like Nighthound is gonna try and pick up a kill on Bubbles. But Bubbles shouts up all the way inside. And it's gonna be fine. Yep, so finally she knows. Away. 
See, see, that's that's what it is. You learn from your mistakes. You know, the wall, especially that cloud. You know, there's too much lockdown. So what you do, you port to your bubble. I mean, your shell to the deepest port of your realms. <laughs> Oops. You port, you port to your deepest realms, and then you make the great getaway. So good uh, getaway coming out from Murph at least right now. She's sitting at three, four, and three. So he's dead. It's definitely respectable for her. And I don't see any much problems coming out for Impunity Storm this game. If this keeps up, they will take game number two. Yeah, and Hellborn is in a very good spot. Legion on the flip side, DCS very far behind, and they need to make something happen today. The problem is that they are having a lot of trouble trying to make that work. MTF is having good farm. It's not about a carry, it's about addressing your opponent when you know that there is a GPM base there. You need to address it. The main reason why... Oh, hold that thought again, because now MPUF is going to be a little bit of trouble. My hits there is going to be hammered on by Puzzle Bob Wizard there, but it seems like backup is in time, and Emperor, a little bit of extension from his part is again going to be pretty questionable, but it seems like Nighthound is going to get compelled out there. The smoke is going to come out, and that could mean a kill. It seems like Nox is not going to get any kill at all, but it is going to be fine. That's going to be a double tap. That correction again. Emperor going to pick up my here, so that's going to be completely one-sided. Uh, it's going to be a 3 is to 2 exchange. And yes, it seems like they are still on a hunt for this MOA. Bless for Moose. It's going to get spotted out here. He's going to try and pot away in a very uncanny spot there, and Nova knows where he is, but Nox doesn't, so there is no vision and there's no way they could have stopped that. Yep, at least uh, they got 3 kills out of that, but in exchange for a prisoner as well as a bubble. Is it worth it? Yes, definitely so, because our Nox is already taking off. That He's just way above the charge right now. He's going to hit the 600 gold per minute after this uh, next camp. Hello, hello sir. There's a Vulture Lord here. Yeah, he doesn't want to hit that, but anyway, he is already hitting that 600 gold per minute mark anytime soon. And he is level 17, by the way. With that, uh, I don't know. He is, uh, re he's already completing that Congo. With that, uh, do know that he's picked up the Abyssal Skull, so he is by all means capable of soloing that Congo. But their Legion team, whatever, they have no wards onto this Congo, so they do not know it is being attempted. They do not know what's going on, and this is going to be a free Congo kill for them. Yes, it is. No wards or whatsoever. They will not get it done. However, since like Gemini is split into two and the ice is going to suck up most of this damage, that means it's going to be a full health Gemini once he comes back. There we go, and Nox is going to be able to pick up the token of life. And that's going to help him secure a lot more balls and guts in the next engagement. So that's what we like to see on the carry. We don't want to see a carry just covering away, but it seems like the Kongor is just stunning to get out. <laughs> yeah, I was saying that. He's, per he's getting perma stun, but it doesn't really matter. He gets the token, and that's going to be a much more... <laughs> it's a... Uh, you had to kill Gemini twice. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Me on top lane. Yep, it's going to be night out against Gemini. There is no support from Hellbond, so this could be a kill on Nox. We might see Nox go down for the first time in this game, but the hack spoils the game. What a spoiler that is. Yep, spoiler. Hack since 12 minutes in this game. He's 2, 5, and 2. I don't, I'm not sure what hacks factor in this game is right now, aside from just really just doing sonar screens as well as Bad Blast, but... Yep, we do see a top tower being nicely challenged for DCS, at least right now. It's about time they're taking a tower. It is almost 22 minutes into this game, and they need towers. If they can't secure kills, yep, towers are the way to go. So we do see Empath hopping into the uh, Nighthound right there, trying to spot a couple of kills, but it would not matter because all of the Hellborn team is currently backing off. They're, they're going to be fine, and they're just going to port out from there. Really satisfied with the tower kill. And it would transition back into a little bit of a farming space. You do see Engineer taking out a little bit of camps of his own. He's a uh, Engineer, right? This Nova, yeah. He's sitting at 3, 2, and 4. He's level 10. That's Steam Boots completed as well as Mystic Vestments doing all the good job of warding around. And that's also one of the contributing factors to their victory right now. Yep, that is an 11 is to 19. As astonishing part is that there is a 7k goal lead so far. And Nox is about 600 GPM. It is still climbing. And now he has token, he's gonna go out for a little bit more. Han here and going for the stun, it does miss, however. And Rally coming in, maybe a Sex Wings left. He might actually waste his token here, but it's gonna split up into two. And they are just gonna stone there for a slight little moment, looking real good. And back away. Pretty questionable, yep. but that is the dogs. name of that game. <laughs> dogs Dude, I mean, are dogs are good. looking real good. It's just like, say, I'm gonna split and like, yo guys, two is better than one. And so I'm guys, just gonna back I can up. do this, can you? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Nox, he, Nox is just showing it off. So he's yeah, sitting Nox 7 0 and 7. So that's pretty Very well groomed, anyway. That's God. a. 11 is to 19. Sorry. <laughs> can, can I just 
can't help it. Anyway, Nighthound's gonna be spotted out here. There should be a dust, or rather a bound eye. Wow! They want to commit to this kill on Nighthound, but there is a shrunken it. So it is not gonna be, well, remotely possible. Plus the fact that there's also lightning speed being called out here. It could be possible if they take out the tier 1, but Nighthound is gonna be fine. Or rather, more than fine. There is no backup coming from the Legion site. It is somewhat a little bit slower, and Parv is going to be the vicinity, but the tower should be gone by the time the whole team assembles like the Avengers normally do. I expect the Avengers are a little bit more faster than that. Yep, they do get a tower in the end, so in favor for Nox. And that's oh, the them port up in. The port in. Mid lane, oh, mid lane. Yeah. Uh, triple pot in, but no kill, or maybe I'm wrong because here comes the stun on the MOM. Bless for most as gonna shout. Uh, what a bless for me, indeed. Like. It's going down. This is just insane. He just got taken out just like tower. that, but unfortunately, tower would not be denied, and the tower will go down instead. For the, for Lee. Uh, I think you just muted your mic, Ice. A little bit of a mistake there. Yep, his uh, microphone just died, guys. I'm sorry, he also abandoned the ship there. <laughs> Ice, if you can hear me, you need to fix the mic. That's it though, it seems like bottom lane is gonna be pushed and... Yep, double damage on Emperor, doing a lot of work against this tier 2. It's just pounding in the way. It definitely is gonna be challenged, it is gonna go down. The night down is in the vicinity, but is not able to do much of a thing there. And that is pretty questionable. That, however, is the name of the entire game, and it seems like Legion team is going to have a little bit of a space to farm as much as possible. Uh, but it's, again, a little bit questionable. I would expect MTF to pick up a, uh, maybe a Jominus being quickly, but he does have the extra quick blade there, so it could be a uh, Nullfire Blade. And if it's a Nullfire Blade, it will not be very effective against the uh, Gemini, because Gemini does have the ability to split away once it's out of the Nullfire Blade. That's it. Hank is going to take a little bit of beating up Nuff, and is potentially going down. Even going to use... Is it needed? That's the question, but Ice is gonna fall from the sky. Ice is gonna fall from the sky. Yeah, uh, Ice is baby not around today, but he is actually... He wasn't around a second earlier, but then wasn't able to connect, I think. Um, the Galicious does go down, and the ulti... As in the portway, is gonna get cancelled by the... Uh, <laughs> by the cap fuel. That has the ice, man, just saying. Rally now gonna try to run away with lightning speed ahead, but is it gonna be enough? There is no mana on Bubbles, so Bubbles is not able to do much of a thing. He does... Not change his boots, uh, but he does it now, but not gonna be But there we go, Nox gonna pick up the champion anymore because of blast moves there. And that is interesting to see. Sorry for the little bit of disturbance, it definitely is ice. I am hoping to fix the microphone. I'm gonna do a he's got a little bit of recall, hope it's gonna be fine. But that's a mid lane is gonna still have to push. And Hellborn team is doing a lot of good work there. Ice says, baby, are you back? Yeah, I am back. Yeah, my headset just went YOLO on me. And it just ran out of battery, so do not get Sound Blaster wireless because it is really, really not that good. So I'm, 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 I'm kidding. It's a good, it's a good uh, headset. But I just ran out of battery, and I am back with a uh, with another Sound Blaster. That's gonna be the Sound Blaster Rage. <laughs> Whoops! Gonna yeah, be I have two. Well, power of ice, baby. One Sound Blaster it goes down, crashes it, takes out another Sound Blaster. That's okay because mid lane rally is gonna be challenger. That hook from uh, the prisoner is gonna go down quickly, and Francoa is gonna pay the price. So that will go to Nox. Blood buff already and looking really good. 10, 0, and 7. He is gonna be a beast. So far, 600 GPM, very far as compared to the Moon Queen. But let's just say and concede that Moon Queen does farm a lot faster than Gemini can. But still, not gonna discredit Nox because he's doing such a fantastic job this game. Yeah, Nox is a beast, man. Speaking of beast. Hello? I think your headset has got some problem again. Yep, Ice Ice Baby is out again. He's gonna whip out yet a third Sound Blaster headset. Ouch. Yep, Ow. he's back. Oh, I just slapped my own head with my headset. Anyway, it is still kind of flipping out. I like, I'm still I, I think your microphone is very soft now, but anyway, that's the third headset already, Ouch. guys. Maybe the fourth one's gonna happen quickly. Anytime soon. Anytime soon. Hello, team. Yeah, I can hear, <laughs> can hear it, but it's very soft. Just change, uh, you have to get on my uh, the volume. That's a mid lane tower already taken care of by Gemini, doing a lot of work there. He does still have the token of life. It's gonna expire in about 19 seconds, so he better make good work of that. I think Legion team knows that his token is gonna expire quickly, so they are gonna hold it a little bit. But it's nice to see Gemini already completing the uh, Beamer's hut as well. But that was pretty quick. I'm gonna see, but anyway, Prison Alt is gonna read. 
be uh, effective right there. Frank Quir actually taken out, but in the end, doesn't really matter. He goes out. Nova actually gets taken out. And Murph right now also dies. But right up, he's in the 945 being the last one to be standing. And he does go down. But Nox is running into Vincini. And he is in danger. He is going to be in the cloud. Bad Blast going to be like, on this fire. And he just oh, wow. combines back. And that is really clutch plays coming from Nox. But the chase is not over. He's trying to make the turn onto his Ratchet Hack. Ratchet Hack might go down. But beautiful wall coming from my hits. But in the end, Hack does the go down as well. But the Beast Hunt coming into play. He is really hard to kill. But the Compel is going to connect. Would he make his getaway? Yes, Twin Fangs again. And he would jet on out of there because right now it doesn't matter. Rally's still on the chase, but would he actually get to get out? No shell serve is gonna help him get the kill. But right now, Nighthound is currently out of mana. He's gotta be careful. Look at the auto attack. Holy crap. He just takes on a Nighthound just like that. And, and probably Oh, no, he wants forward. That's a quad kill. Quad kill coming up for Nox over there. He just and got that's gonna be Yeah, that's I'll call it a general set because Massive Arms just came back to life and Nox just made the greatest turn around this game. Holy yeah, shit. man. And entire Legion team just got turned on. And yep, help on team doing a lot of work there. Gemini, we thought he was gonna die, but the last minute clutch uh, combination definitely made a lot of work there. And now it seems like Hex going down as well, but not to Nox. And Franco is gonna pick up the kill, and Nox is definitely gonna pay the price this time around. So we got the dog, guys, but at what cost? All four members went down. Previously, that's gonna give him a lot of gold, by the way. So he does buy back out of uh, no, he doesn't buy back. It actually stays now. Wondering why he didn't buy back. But anyway, that tech is gonna connect and down goes Francor. Next in line will be blessed for most, but team help on will not pursue matter because there is no carry there just yet. I gonna be picked up again by engineer, and then you will see the puzzle box model doing a lot of work in the warding. So do note that the puzzle box still retains its old um, features. Oh, we don't see a rally. We get a compel. Yes, he compels onto the glaciers. The glaciers not be able to port out in time, and even the, the what what do you call it? Demoralizing roar is enough to slow glaciers, and that would be the end of bass stomp right there. So it doesn't really matter because that puzzle box has no stuns whatsoever. He just gets taken out. So and right now the Nighthound is on the chase onto this prison nine. Four, five. He's gonna be careful. The bash coming out and down goes What's Emperor just like that. So Nighthound is still a very, very strong factor for this DCS, but that doesn't really, that doesn't really matter because the middle lane, the tower's down, the melee axes are down, and Impunity Storm is in a very, very good position right now. 12k gold advantage, 30 minutes into this game, and now Gemini is already almost hitting that 700 gold per minute mark. That is insane. Yeah, it's insane, man. And ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that Legion team can still win this game. Only 12k lead in this game. And Nighthound, although we are all a little bit inclined to know that uh, Hellbound team doing a lot of work, and I was actually wrong. It is not a Nullfire Blade previously. It is a uh, nice Brutalizer. That's going to be a lot more effective against the Gemini. So that is uh, definitely an absolute good pickup for the Nighthound. Meanwhile, the Gemini is yet on another, uh, sorry, yet on another uh, Hekhan and she does, uh, he does make it a pretty easy job there. So they are very good friends uh, as per the announcer uh, who just said it. That said, 20 to 31 so far, 31 minutes in and help on team in very good spot but they can still lose this. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Well, Gemini is really, really going forward to his uh, item. And meanwhile, top lane actually, Engineer gets compelled in and Nighthound finishes the job. Oh, but right now, Prisoner is getting turned on himself wow, wow. and they do get the kill. And Francor getting credit for the Emperor you kill and Bubbles would just nicely shove stuff away right there. Puzzle box models are on the chase, but it doesn't matter. They scored two kills and that is that is a little bit dangerous for Here comes the revenge. Right now, here comes the Gemini, here got the Twin Fangs, not gonna connect whatsoever, split into his dogs, and he's just gonna split, and the rally would nicely compel out, but it's not even compel, I think it's a tablet, but right now he's still on a chase, he's still on a chase, and the rally is getting taxed out, oh, one chain link is actually gonna connect, oh, another clutch portal key coming from rally, but nice dust from Murph right there, and in the meanwhile, back, back actually gets killed onto his empire in the background, but the rally, I don't see him making a getaway from here, he's still in the fox, however, they can spot him, but Murph actually finally spotting him out, and yep, I know. KS from Bastal, man. <laughs> Insane Tundra Blast. Finally, at least securing the kill on yeah. the visitor. But the Nighthound did manage to get away whatsoever. That's really unfortunate. But they do score that revenge onto, uh, onto our Empath as well as our Rally. So, Rally trying to make the big juice. Unfortunately, not be able to uh, make the getaway. That, re that really, really clutch. Oh, invisible not, not clutch. Gemini is going to get spotted out here. In the mid lane, nearly got a hack yeah. again, but the hack was fine. Yep, there's a water of breath, by the way, by uh, Blasphemous from DCS. He was done from getting picked off, but but that was uh, that was the hack. So anyway, 
Uh, Hongor is up. Do take note, and they are going to go. Yep, they are going to go for his like nice. He's just mentioned right there that Gemini is going to go for his. Uh, I believe what is going to be the Yinjuro actually going to help him out towards his movement speed, hitting that constant 5 2 2. And do see how quick Hongor is just melting to the ground right there. Gemini is doing a lot of work. Puzzle Box models are 1 1 is down, guys. 1 Puzzle Box is down. And the token would be nice to pick up by Nox once again. And with this token for the next 4 minutes, they should be able to end this game. Yeah, uh, the only problem so far is that they help on team. Is dragging this a little too long for my liking, and if Nighthound does have an uh, even better farm, maybe going with the Jominus Bane, that would provide a lot of lockdown on the Gemini. Don't forget that, I'm sorry, don't forget the Gemini is about 3k health there, and Nighthound only at about uh, 1.9k, so they need to make sure that they have something up against the 3k health Gemini. That is the problem coming up for the Legion side. And again, just like the first game, they didn't address Nox, uh, only one death after 16 kills. Like, what the hell is wrong here, guys? You know something's wrong when you don't kill the carry for an entire 30 minutes into a game. That is just absurd. But it could also be because Nox is playing very safe. There was a lot of passive warding, a right defensive warding coming from Nova. That would definitely be the main reason as well. But don't forget that that is one of the main reasons why they are now so far behind. Yep, so tower would be nice to take down by DC, he's was on top and they would just nicely back on out of there to try to defend this bottom defense tower that's coming up from the push for Impunity Storm but right now the jo the, uh, the fire and ice is in the front lines because he has a token after all so all of the people are in the missing background he just combines back into one by the way and he has that good Juro delivered to him here comes the rally, he boost a compel back as a form of defense, but it doesn't really matter. Look at the amount of HP that Gemini has. So, Puzzle Box Wizard burning a little bit of mana from MOA of Arms. MOA of Arms has that Storm Spirit, by the way, just to take note of that. And defense power is dropping really quickly. And after this wave of creeps, it might just go down. And Impunity Storm might be. Oh, he tries to come in for that. And Gemini is knocking. But he gets hacked in the middle of the background, however. Nighthound is taking. Oops. Nighthound is trying to just hit back right now because he's split into two different skirmishes and right now Rally is going to be taken up by this Gemini and Gemini is auto attacking all of his way to the double tap and, but in the back line of a fast off gets a kill onto Nighthound as well as the oops, as the Empath but Nighthound does buy back by the way but it doesn't really matter Legion concedes the game without any GG's whatsoever okay that was won by Master of Arms <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because Impunity Storm just takes game number two ladies and gentlemen that would be a 2-0 victory for Impunity Storm. Yep, it is a very nice series, ladies and gentlemen. That game definitely well won by Impunity Storm. We did see the Immortal on the Gemini. And I you did forget to mention that <laughs> previously. When you went to it's okay, the viewers know that he got the Immortal. It's yeah, okay. it's just <laughs> that. Anyway, yeah, it's okay. This is just another Immortal in another G League game. It's that every day we get this kind of action anyway. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That is Ice Ice Baby with me, and this is Babel. Uh, that game definitely can deliver the analysis there. Definitely the problem was as uh, similar as it can possibly be with the first game. You have to address Nox. That's the problem, and the only games which Impurity Storm dropped against uh, MRR or whatever game that they played is when Nox was completely controlled and addressed. So in this kind of a situation, they didn't do that. So it's not a game where you can play passive against passive because if you do that, Nox is just gonna outfarm you. He's known the GPM bis for a reason. It's gonna show you what it means to have farm. It's gonna show what it means to have them 800 GPM, blah blah blah. That is the way Nox does things and you can't win that. If you can't win that, you're gonna have to kill him. So that's just as simple as that. But the problem is Team Legion didn't do that and that was our DCS for you guys. So anyway, a little bit sad to see that but no worries at all because that was a fantastic game from both sides. So huge props to both teams for giving us a great game. Of course, a hearty congratulations to Imperial Storm from EGTV for winning this series. We hope you guys will be able to come back uh, tomorrow with a similar style of gameplay as well. So again, tomorrow is going to be another Imperial Storm coverage but we do have a little bit of shout out here. So before I carry on, Ice says Baby, take it away. Yep, gonna be shout out to DCS as well as the Impunity Storm for giving us one of the greatest games to cast for this G League Cycle 4. And Impunity Storm, definitely really hearty congratulations to you, like what Babel nicely mentioned. Shout out to all the viewers out there. I'm seeing 90 over viewers actually today, as well as a good, a little bit of shout out to Irie, who's she's in the chat, as well as GovXZZ. I know you're always there. Shout out to you as well. And yeah, that being said, I think that would do all for me. So Babel, take it away. Alright, now it's my turn. I'm gonna shout to my girlfriend first. 
as well as uh, to Galaxy for allowing Ice Bubble to come on board here for a little bit of a guest caster uh, kind of a series. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy that. If you want more of that, do let me know. Uh, we will try and make those kind of stuff happen in events like this when Lark go on a date. So huge shout out to Lark. I hope you guys, I hope you, sorry, will be able to enjoy your date uh, with a perfect conscience knowing that we are not uh, with you <laughs> and that you ditched us. So die today, bitch. Just saying. Anyway. Die today. Yeah, just die. Uh, we yeah. are also going to shout out to uh, the entire GTV crew as well as Isis Baby for filling in. Thank you so much as well as uh, to all the viewers out there, uh, all 90 of you. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys will follow us on the Facebook as well as the uh, YouTube. All the VODs are going to be there. And if you are a little bit uh, impressed or rather very impressed or whatever level of impressed uh, you are, please also donate to us. We need the extra funds to try and set up a casting studio in Singapore as well as Malaysia. So hope you can help us with that. That's it. This is Babel, and just gonna deliver an announcement tomorrow. Me and Lark, after he is done with, uh, after he hooks up tonight, he's gonna be back tomorrow with me on Garena Hunt C, and that would be Call of Rally for the Malaysia Singapore Hunt Championship. So do stay tuned to that on channel Garena Hunt C. And at night, we will come back to Epic Gaming Television for another round of Honto Southeast Asia. That's it, this is Babel, and joining me is Size Size Baby. Have a great night or day wherever you are, and stay fantastic, guys. Goodbye. It's Saturday. Yep. It's Saturday, so remember to stay hard, party hard, and we will see you tomorrow. See you guys. Bye-bye.